Hey guys, it's Mary Langwish here to inspire and empower you on your artistic journey. Today, we're gonna to be talking about artist block. Not a super fun topic, but something that all of us artists struggle with at some point in our journey. We're gonna talk about ways to prevent and fix artist block in three easy to remember steps. But let's start off by talking about why we get in ruts like this. I think a lot of times we get bored with what we're working on and nothing is feeling fresh and new and we need a change. We could also be overworked at our creative jobs or just any job in general and therefore we don't have creative juices flowing because we're just completely tired and worn out. Sometimes it can actually happen after you've taken too long of a break from doing creative work. So, you know, long vacations or long stretches of time where you're working too much on something that's not creative, those can even put you in this rut as well. Or another thing is that you haven't taken a break in a long time. This is probably a big one for a lot of us is that we need to learn to take some breaks, take a step back so that we don't get overworked. And another one, especially a big one for me, is that my workstation or my house or my to-do list is just so full and so messy that my mental space is just like limited. So you might come up with a few reasons why you get artist block, but let's talk about three ways that you can overcome this. First one is taking action. So that involves things like taking a mini vacation, going on a walk, scheduling a hike with some friends. Outdoor activities like that to clear your mind are a great idea. Try picking up another task, like doing some cooking, doing some cleaning, doing some gardening, or even taking up a new skill, like try some sewing or knitting or something that you don't normally do. And then two big ones under this category are the first one is scheduling time to work on creative things. So for myself, I schedule every Friday to be when I need to at least paint something or draw something. I might not feel like it, but I've scheduled that day to do something creative. And then last but not least, undertaking action is sometimes you literally have to sit down and do it. Put your butt to the chair and just do something on paper <laughs> or canvas or whatever you do. Sorry, that's the reality of that. And honestly, it works. Like if you sit down and make yourself do it, you can actually get a little bit of, of that feeling of excitement back, a readiness to work on something that you've been wanting to work on or whatever. There's a lot of cool benefits from forcing yourself to sit down. Fight the resistance and just do it. So that takes me to step two, and that is seek out inspiration. So some different ways to do that. A big one is that you can look at other people's art. I actually use Pinterest as a go-to for me because I can look up a specific thing like impressionistic painting of landscapes and a whole ton of stuff comes up and just looking through all of that really, really inspires me to come up with some new ideas or some new things I wanna try. After doing something like that, oftentimes the next thing to do is to sit down and try to copy something that you see, someone else's work or someone else's style, to kind of get in into just a playful mood. A lot of times, your own style, your own wants and likes and dislikes from copying someone's work really come through and it starts to look like your own. Network with other artists. Be in connection with other creative people. It's also a good idea to get some feedback from them, like show them your work, have them show you theirs as well. It's just a good idea to kind of be in that community with other artists so that you don't feel like you're alone. Another big one for me, I lose track a lot with what my passion is with art specifically. So a big one is looking back at some of my own art, the things that I enjoy, the styles that I like to do, the subject matter that I like to do, and just asking myself like, what is it about these paintings or drawings that I specifically enjoyed and try to think about those things and do those things again. Two kind of preventative measures under how to seek out inspiration is to let the excitement of a project that you, you've been working on or have been working on spill over into the next one. So obviously, you know, we, we go through these seasons of artist block and seasons of inspiration and lots of artwork. And let that, when you're finished with sort of a big project or a big 
painting or something, let that excitement move you into the next thing quickly. Don't sit around and relax too much because then your inspiration is gonna kinda disappear and then you'll find yourself in a rut. Also, a little trick I learned from a book that I've read recently, which I'm having trouble remembering which book it was. I'll put it in the description if I think of it later. But a really handy trick that I learned is to actually stop yourself when you're working on a piece of art before you get tired, bored, or your inspiration gets a little bit sapped, <laughs> energy gets sapped, is stop yourself before you are actually feeling like you're done for the day working on a project and let that excitement and anticipation for the next day continue throughout the evening um, as you're waiting for the next moment you can sit down and work on that project. So for example, if I'm painting and I'm enjoying my process and yada yada yada, it's really fun, before I get kind of tired and exhausted, I'm gonna stop myself. Even though I might be like, I know what step I wanna do next and I really wanna do it, but I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna let that inspiration and excitement continue onto the next day or continue onto the next work session. It works like a charm. Tip number three is creating productive rituals and habits. So a few things at least that I like or that work for me or maybe some ideas that you can use is I love tea. And when I make a cup of tea, that becomes sort of a productive ritual. I know that it's show time. <laughs> it's time to work, it's productive time. And so having a cup of tea next to me while I work is a huge part of getting stuff done. Sometimes putting yourself together, getting in a nice pair of clothes, putting on a little makeup, fix your hair, uh, you know, do your nails. Uh, sometimes doing a little bit of personal, you know, beautifying, personal beautifying, um, can make, just make you feel better and feel more productive. So when you sit down and are in artist block, you can feel like you have a little bit more reason to do it. Also, designate a specific spot in your house or if you have a studio or a corner in your room that you can make your creative spot, have lighting and plants or anything that brings you happiness and joy. Put things on the walls that make you happy. Have other people's art, have your own art, have things that you know, quotes that remind you of specific ways that you should be working and all of these things so that you can create an environment that's actually conducive to creating and get to work. A big one that I found recently to be very, very helpful is actually tidying up my spaces a little bit. Now this doesn't have to be just my creative space. Um, a lot of times my room needs to be cleaned up. I need to put laundry away. I need to clean up the kitchen. The living room looks like a disaster, so I might as well put stuff away before I sit down to work. Doing that sort of physical cleanup of your spaces actually cleans up your mental space as well. And then another one that I do all the time, I actually do it every Monday before I jump into the week, is I create a dump list. And basically what that means is literally anything that comes to mind of things that I wanna do this week, or even stuff I know that won't happen this week, but stuff that just is in my head and on my mind constantly, like future ideas or plans, I write those all just on a list. I take a blank piece of paper and I write things down. I might categorize them by things to do this week versus future things, or personal versus business versus art but I just kind of dump whatever's in my brain on paper and I can't tell you how relieving that is for your mind, again, creating space for your mind so that you can actually be creative. And the biggest thing, of course, is to keep fun in the equation. So, you know, if you're doing a project or doing a, you know, a personal idea that you've had for a long time, but it's not fun anymore, like there's a level of maybe you need to move on. Maybe you need to try something different. Doesn't mean that project is maybe, you know, gone for good and you never want to go back to it. But there is something to be said about seeking out a little bit of of what's gonna be enjoyable for you so that you can actually get back on track, actually get out of the rut and get excited about your work again. So 
those are my three tips for you taking action seeking out inspiration and creating productive rituals and habits for yourself so that you can get out of that artist block that we all find ourselves in occasionally. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Please share it with another creative person or artist in your life. We all need to hear these tips and tricks and learn from each other along the way. Give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and we'll see you next time. Bye!